Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Odious Stuff. If you are new here, this is the place for music production, creative confidence, learning Ableton Live in a very fun and friendly and awesome way. So welcome, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hit the bell icon if you want to be here because I like being here, so maybe you like being here as well. <laughs> Today, you will learn how to create Ableton Live instrument by yourself from your own samples using sampler or drum rack. I also show how to save it so that you can also share it with your friends. If you would like to download the instrument I create in this video, you can go and do it from the link down below. So let's get into it now. <laughs> Okay, so I went to Young Thug Studio in York to record and there was this amazing piano that was sounded very clunky and fun. So I recorded with Sure KSM microphones. I recorded one octave. So I literally just pressed a key one by one and recorded them. I made sure that every single note played long enough to get the decay from them as well. After this, I compressed them a little bit and exported them as separate WAV files into this folder. If you would like to, you can always record more octaves and you can also record each key in several different velocities, which you can then control in samplers. Today, I will just only work on one velocity and one octave because it's one of the easiest way to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and add sampler into a track. So if you are confused about sampler and what is a zone, what is all this? I have a full tutorial about sampler and how everything works in there. So go to the link down below to understand sampler in further detail. I will just show you how you can utilize all these amazing qualities sampler has to create your own instrument today. I have here a piano that I have recorded. I will select all the clips and literally just drag them into the zone area. And there you see them now wonderfully selected. What's happened though is that they are all in alphabetical order, even though we should have them as a scale. So we should have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. We can sort them alphabetically here, right click. And from the context menu, you can sort by key, sort by velocity and selector. So we want to sort them by a key. I think it's not recognizing every Everything, so I'm just gonna manually organize it. So naming them so that the computer recognizes them is very important. So I'm just gonna go and fix that. So now we have all of them in a right order. Now we need to make sure that all of them are on this MIDI grid in the right location. So these are C3. So you can see C3 is here. So what we need to do now is to use these selectors and root keys to map them into right place. This is the fastest way for me to do this now. So C3, obviously we need to move C sharp three goes to C sharp three and so on. There we go. Now, literally we can play this octave and it will work. Let's go away from the zone and we will find C3. When I press these buttons, you will see that I can play this octave now. But then when I go to the next C, there's nothing there. So what we need to do now is we can use these same notes to actually add them to the other octaves as well. But then we need to use the root in sampler to make sure that they are pitched down and up. That I can select them all, hold down Alt and duplicate them. There we go. I need to just move them up in one octave. What happened with that is that the root also moved up. Look at the last B3. If I go and change the root now, you can see that the tone goes up and down. So now it's in the original root note. So we need to make sure that the notes that we just copied, we need to make sure that the root is going to be octave lower. So the notes will go higher. It sounds a bit funny, but this is the fastest way to do it. <laughs> so now we can go up in octave. 
So you can see that the actual notes are here, but the root is mapped an octave lower to where the C3 is. And this is how we can make sure that the notes are actually going higher on the keyboard when we're using the same samples. And now literally we can just keep on doing the same thing. Copy these. When we move the notes here, we need to take the root notes back here on C3 because we're using the same notes. You can continue how long you want it. Obviously, some keyboards don't even have this many notes, so you don't need to go all the way up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing, but we're going to go lower, so C2. So I'm going to take these notes, take them there, and then now we need to, again, bring the root up into C3. There we go. And we again copy these and then we just do exactly the same thing. C1 and then root into C3. Now I can use my MIDI keyboard to play this instrument. And this literally comes from only those notes that I recorded. How beautiful is that? And what we can do now is add this into an instrument rack. So we can right click here and group it and we can add some effects to it. I have now LNA's wonky piano is here. And I have the instrument here. That's the sampler here. And I have also now mapped a lot of stuff. So I have added reverb, delay and utility here. And I have also mapped some of the controls from the sampler. So from the pitch oscillator, as well as from the filter into the macros here. I have put the delay amount, delay feedback, filter frequency, FM, oscillator, gain, pitch envelope and so on. So you can see them all here. And I've created some presets for different kinds of settings. So nice. Edgy. So example, this one comes from the pitch oscillator here. So controlling the pitch envelope in the sampler. There we go. This is basically how you can create it. If you would like to see a more detailed tutorial on how I actually mapped everything and create all this, then tell me down below and I will do that. That's it. And now we need to make sure that we can save it and share it with other people. Obviously, just save by clicking this button here. We need to make sure that it, we're on a basic dry preset and then we press here and it will automatically save it with you under user library and we can save it there but if we share now this folder with our friend it's not going to include all the samples you put so much effort and time to put into the sampler so what we can do is have one folder to your desktop to your external hard drive somewhere in the places so you can add it by add folder and then what we just do is we drag and drop it into the folder and press enter before anything else you press enter it creates a folder with the preset, but also adds the samples into the folder. So now where you're going to share the preset, you need to share this LNS Wonky Piano One project. So you're going to share that. That will include the samples. And as soon as they load the preset into their Ableton Live, the samples are already included in there and they don't need to manually put them into there as well. We can do the same thing with a drum rack as well. So let's have a look at that. We're going to add an empty drum rack here. Let's go and add now these samples into our drum rack. But if we go and look at our drum rack, the C3 is here and the octave is kind of split between two of these grids. So how we can see the whole grid is command and shift. And then you click a couple times and you can see now the whole octave C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So this is going to make your life so much faster because now when we take all these samples and we go here, we can actually import them all same time. Obviously, they seem to go wrong way around. 
So I'm just going to arrange them here. So now what, what we need to do is the same thing is that we start to copy paste what we have here, this octa into higher, and then we need to transpose those using the simpler in the drum rack. So you go into the notes, you enter 12, and now it's octave higher. And now you repeat this same thing with everything else. And remember, it's easier to copy paste everything to the next row if you hold down command. I usually like copying the whole octave first and then transpose all of them like that. And then here, 12, 12, 12, and so on. And then we literally do the same thing here on the below. And instead of plus 12, you put minus 12 and it goes lower. And that's literally it. So here I have them all set up. As you can see, I went all the way to minus 24. So I have three octaves. So I have the main transpose, then I have one plus 12 octave, one minus 12 and one minus 24, which is plenty enough to use this. I did the same thing as I did with sampler. I added some reverb, some delay and utility. And then I mapped gain output here, reverb, delay and delay feedback. And this is my beautiful instrument that I have created. I have dry, I have wet, ping pong, and ping pong choir. presets and we save it exactly as we did with sampler so you go and find where you want to save it so it needs to be a folder on your computer and then you drag and drop it there press enter and it creates a folder with your samples in there as well and that's it if you would like to get these two instruments that i created in this video for yourself then go to the link down below and you can get them from my website i have some other videos where i create presets example for vocal mixing so if you want to learn more about the mapping and for audio effect racks then go and check those out from here and from down below. Also, thank you so much, my Patreons who are here, who's always supporting me. And, you know, we have so much fun in the Patreon. We have Discord channel as well. We are supporting each other. I also create a lot of other material there in live streams, deep dives, all kind of stuff. So go and check my Patreon also down below. Thank you so much. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, come again. You're lovely. Have fun with your instruments.